Hi Rick, um, right, I'm gonna model in your microphone, so uh, let's just do it. I'm gonna come in here, grab a sphere, um, a cylinder, and I'm just gonna take this down to about eight. This on zero, so this is what's happening, okay? And make that polymesh 3D. Go onto this edge here, and poly loop, poly goop, Q mesh. I'm just doing this to reinforce this edge part that you've got. And I'm gonna pull one more out here. And maybe one more. Okay, good, I'm masking up this section. Inversing, going to move. Coming down here. Let's scale that out. Okay, that's my block. Just going to scale this up, okay. And I'm just going to mask this bottom section and move it in so it's flat. So we're looking for a square here, roughly that size, okay. Right, so I've got this block, it's all in here. Now I'm going to add a couple more bits in. So I'm going to go back to my cylinder 3D. Make that a poly mesh 3D. Name it in here. Subtract circle. Back to this, append. Go to move. Bring this out. I'll scale it in a bit for now. Okay, good. Okay, now you've also got a square and a round bit, so I'm actually going to duplicate this out. I don't know what the size of this piece that you're using is, the hole, and at this point it doesn't matter. Notice everything's lining up as well. Okay, I'm going to take that one, duplicate it, move it to the other side. These are temporary placeholders. And now I want a square going through the middle, so I'm going to go in again. I'm going to go to a cube. I'm going to make that poly mesh 3D. I'm going to come down to the initialize settings. And I'm going to set resolution of 111, make that a Q mesh. I'm going to scale it up a little bit here. Come into geometry, rename it. Square fixing. Okay, and put it back into this. So I'm going to append it into here. So there it is there. I'm going to move this and scale it. Again, I don't know what this size is either. And now we're gonna do this middle section that's gonna cut through here. So I'm gonna go back to my base cylinder that I've got. I'm gonna make that a poly mesh 3D. And I'm basically going to pull a bit of this out. So I'm going back into my Z modeler brush I'm going to go poly loop, poly group, this settings. Oop. Yeah, maybe bring it out one more. Okay, and same as we did before. Put that there. Select this top bit, inverse it, center this, straighten it. Okay, that's good. And I'm gonna call this cut midsection. Okay, good, right, now I've done that. I've created all the model parts that I need for this piece now. So I'm just gonna append in this new midsection, which is here. 
and I'm just having a quick look at your model okay we got it round so I need to just change the direction of this and go to rotate rotate it round and I just want to make it big so we've got that midsection that's going to cut through again I'm not sure what size this is but you would measure that bring this up bring this down okay we're ready now to do our subtractions from this piece so our top piece here is at the top okay so we can start to do our subtractions into this so the first one I'm going to turn boolean on and we're going to position this into here by the way you can use mirror to get the same point and position it into the model however much you want use a subtraction there just turn polyframe off so you can see it subtracted um, if you need to push it a bit more you can push it a bit more like that got this one here I'm going to do the same in boolean mode subtract push this in however far you need okay then we're going to go down to the square which I'm going to bring up and I'm going to put that into subtractive mode push it into the model so now you can see we've got our square fixing that goes in there yeah and finally we've got this piece here that I've also put into subtraction and I will put this middle piece here in subtraction so now I have the piece as you have it there now I do notice that it's slightly curved in on this side so I can go to this top piece and because it's very low poly I can take this in here inverse it go to scale and bring this in like that and I can even bring it up if I bring it up I've got to watch that this isn't going to intersect with it so it's a bit too low here so I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to move it up a bit okay so we now need to just um, increase the quality of all this stuff so I'm going to go out of boolean and just concentrate on each piece we've got everything set up we just need to concentrate on each piece now so if I go down to my dynamic subdiv and turn that on that's what I'm going to get so I need to crease some of this so I'm going to go across to my Z modeler brush again BZ on the keyboard let's come into draw mode and we're going to introduce some reinforcing lines through this model so that I can crease it and actually crease it here so let's just crease we go to crease and we're going to hit the crease button I'm going to turn dynamic subdivs on again and that's much better let's turn this up a bit higher okay that's the effect now if you want it beveled corners you're going to have to do a little bit more work in this basic shape here but it's basically done so I can apply that into here I'm going to go to the next piece now now if I take this into dynamics we're going to have problems because it's going to basically go really rounded like this so what I want to do with this is I want to hit this crease again that's creased it now if I put it into this it's nice and sharp Turn dynamics on so I'll put this to about level 4 so it's nice and clean I'll apply it and we're going to do the same for this one as well again if you want any beveling on it you can put the beveling on using the Z modeler brush B Z on the keyboard Z go on to that edge loop there go to bevel edge loop complete and you can put a bevel on there if you wanted to it's up to you I'm not going to for this just to show you quickly how to do it I'm going to go to crease I'm going to crease this dynamic subdivs turn them on turn it up to about level four five and click apply that will turn it into subdivision levels here we got this square block now this square block definitely could do with having a bevel on it you're going to notice that if I do this it's sometimes going to bevel the wrong thing so what I suggest you do is just rotate it To the right direction something like that now what we can do is we can come into the geometry tab again go down the crease hit that crease button turn on dynamic subdivs 
put this on about four or five so it's nice and clean and then apply it like that so I've got a little bevel it's not hard bevel but it's kind of soft which is probably what you want for this piece now this piece here I'm just going to crease it and add subdivision levels increase dynamic subdivs turn them on put them up to about level four hit apply and it's applied in there notice they're all on level five subdivision levels uh, this piece here once again down to crease increase that dynamic subdivs turn them on to about level four hit apply gain five so all our sub tools are on level five now if we look let me just make them all visible hold the shift key let's come down to here you can see level five alt click level five level five they're all the same now if i turn boolean back on you're going to see it's a much better version because we've improved on the quality so that's your basic shape um, as far as scaling and moving and stuff um, you should be able to do that using a scale master so once you've actually got your shape all in position uh, that square could do with actually being rotated it's around the wrong way around so I'm just going to come in here and just rotate this 180 degrees and I'm just going to pull it out a bit there remember all these little pieces here and here you can pull them and move them out into the position they need to be into so I go back to this one move that forwards here a bit and you've got that square knocking through which is great bring that out a bit more Oop. turn that one off like that and that is your microphone once you finish with it you would just hit make boolean mesh I'll send you this file and you can set up your own uh, sizes for everything and once this is finished you can just append in the new U mesh which is here I'll set these up in a folder call them creation assets close this down and we now have a U mesh that's ready to go so this can be decimated out um, you could re mesh it to smooth the edges and that's it done so that's your basic microphone shape of course I'd leave this bottom if you want to put a marker on exactly where the center is in here so you can put something in there you can always append in a new um, piece of geometry I'll take this piece here and I'll just duplicate it out drag it down here now you can do this straight into the piece so I take this rotate it around put it up here obviously you get the size for it you want to do it small because you're using it as a pilot hole you put it in there and you put that into <clears throat> you put that into boolean there and you can see that and you can make a boolean mesh so you could add that straight to this file here let me just turn that one off and turn all these back on there so you've got it so I can make a new boolean mesh there let me just delete this one out okay that's good so you've got your pilot hole ready for to you to drill it out and bore in your um, thread for it so you go down to boolean make boolean mesh and the same thing applies okay that's done close this back up append in this new boolean mesh with the hole in the bottom and there you have it so you can see you've got the geometry on here like this but if you need to get that geometry count down from um, 61,440 and there's no reason why you should perhaps you have to decimate this but you could go and use the decimation master so to decimate this down you would pre-process current when that's finished which is going to be really quick you can then set, set a decimation amount and you can hit um, decimate current and you'll get a decimated version for print but this is actually fine why it is at the moment because this is a watertight mesh okay I'm going to send you this file and you've got this file and you can work out your measurements using the scale master and tips and tricks that I've already shown you okay